shades. I like to start off with my shades on. Hey, everybody, we're back. Happy no more holidays. The war on Christmas is over for another, another year. Christians can just go back to doing their regular Christian thing and not worry about it. Two guests on the show today, a newbie and an oldbie. We got the great Joey Coco Diaz is back. And he brought his best friend in life and and podcasting partner. Right? You're on his podcast? I am. I'm the I'm the guinea pig for all the treats. <laughs> Lee Syed is here, you guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming down. We uh, are excited, always excited to have Joey and, and anybody Joey wants to bring along is automatically. It's been funny. He usually doses me and leaves me in the corner for the past two times. Yeah, you've there. come and watched before, but now you're on the uh, you're on the chopping block, as it's it were. Fun. It's fun to be. You right. have to do it. Are you? I'm already drinking Sprig, the soda. That's but you great. know, I know you spend a lot of time with Joey, but you're not Joey Diaz level, uh, you know, Olympic champion of, of weed. By default, I wasn't before at all. You're getting like, I better like at three it. Three times, it's gone to the point now that I need like 500 milligrams, or an edible just doesn't do anything. Like it's pretty sad. Like I have to go to the store and spend like 70 dollars to have anything happen. Because there's, <laughs> there's like the, like the the packages will say like 10 doses, four doses. There's no halves. I've never taken a half of anything. Well, today's your lucky day, Cox. Oh, yeah, and look it's at that. I get too. There's no halves. There you go. May I? These are really good. Those are the stars yeah. of death. <laughs> That's what Pontius gave Jesus to put them over the fucking top right there. Red Star Candies. And what does this up here mean, the 200? 200 milligrams. In each one? Yeah. Holy shit. For breakfast. Fuck I'm it. Gonna... <laughs> you eat them all day? They give me anxiety by 6 o'clock, so I got to start later early. We've talked about this before. You're... <laughs> You wake and bake and ease off as the day goes you along. You gotta ease it off, and yeah. then you can blast off with some stars of death. Well, be honest, like you're easing off of 800 milligrams, like 600. Like it's, it's not like you're doing one. But you uh, periscope uh, your wake and bakes. Yes, that's awesome. The morning joint. Yeah, does it happen at the same time every day, or just I whenever you get up? I try to do between up? eight and nine, but sometimes I gotta walk the baby to school. So that throws my whole fucking day off. I can't go into school smelling like reefer. <laughs> so I gotta wait till I get back from the daycare and then I can blast off about 10 after nine or something. But today I did it at 7.20, 7.30 I smoked on there. I gotta remember to look for that. Cause I'm, you know, if I'm up that early, I'll, I'll, I'll look for you. Cause that's awesome. That People you do like that. getting up early and smoking a bowl and just, I want it, I, I like to do it like a 15 minute block till the joint is gone, you know? <laughs> Once you smoke the whole number, the fucking pericos scope goes down and it's all over. So. Yeah, yeah. But at least we get to smoke a number, drink some coffee, talk some shit. People always ask me uh, when they see me tweeting early in the morning, "What you know, you're a stoner. What are you doing up so early?" It's like, well, you, you got to wake up to get high. <laughs> That's right. But you can't just you, you can't sleep in all day. You can't enjoy that. Do you Pablo <laughs> Escobar it, or do, do you take a couple of minutes? <laughs> like, uh, it really depends. It's different all the time. You know, sometimes I have to take the kid to daycare. <laughs> no, I never have to do that. But I, uh, I, yeah, uh, as early as I can, you know. But I have, if I have appointments in the morning, I'll, uh, I'll wait till I get done with all that. You know, like errands and shit. I'll do those early. Here we go. It's happening, you guys. It's 19 minutes after the hour. We've got... Uh, sativa, <clears throat> excuse me, a sativa and an indica, as always. We've got a uh, black jack is the name of the sativa, this stuff here. And then uh, we've got sunset sherbet, which oh. is a little too fancy a name. And also, I love how we're so sure that the guests don't want indica that we only provide them <laughs> this tiny amount. But you'll, you don't care. I don't. I'm a, the sativas really don't fucking do it to me. Yeah, so the you'll... sativas is like a, a sour diesel will burn me. We'll just put that near like you that. then. But uh, I'm an indica type of guy. I'm a savage with indicas. Yeah. Well, again, I brought that's... this sativa myself. This was pineapple uh, ch crack, and I brought some motherfucking <laughs> perennial OG. <laughs> this is the shit Lemmy smoked. <laughs> this is the shit really? that killed Lemmy. That's the oh, shit that no. killed Lemmy right there at the hospital. That was his last number. Mmm, that is nice. That's what I smoked for breakfast. And uh, no, I, I, I like to have like a little oatmeal. I like to take a pee, maybe drink some coffee, 
and then I can blast off after the cup of coffee. I can't just wake up and take a joint and hit it. That'll ruin my fucking day. Well, everybody blast now because it's it's twenty. It's uh, you know four twenty somewhere, as we like to hey, say. Four twenty somewhere. Uh, Halifax, Canada, celebrating four twenty with us right now. And uh, hello to all my friends in Truro, uh, where I spent a, a week one night. <laughs> Where was Truro? Truro is just outside of Halifax, and it's where they are currently shooting the, the show Trailer Park Boys. So I got to go up there and uh, hang out with them for a while. How's that? How's this is that pretty good. You? you like that? I like it a lot. You have a cool lighter? This is, a, oh shit, it's your face. <laughs> That's pretty cool. No, this is, yeah, this is. Oh shit, it's your face. Oh shit. How many times have I heard that? Oh shit. It's your goddamn face. Once again, your fat, stupid face. Today's my daughter's birthday. For reals? Yeah, she's three. I gotta go pick her up at like four and then get fucking pizza and jump up and down. But I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> That's awesome. But we do. He took me to Austin a couple years ago, and at like four in the morning, we took those stars for like a what, like a seven a.m. flight. Fuck yeah, you gotta fly high. I do. I hate it. I got it. busted on a flight a couple weeks ago smoking <laughs> the vapor pen on fucking. You were Del sneaking Pond. some hits. Fuck yeah. <laughs> But I, I had just plugged it in. It was giving some donkey hits. Like, it was <laughs> killing motherfuckers. But when you smoke on a plane, like, if you smoke and you blow it this way, the air sucks it in, the little vacuum. You'll see it go. <laughs> but oh. my daughter was sitting there, so I couldn't smoke because she was getting high. So I said, fuck it. I went and got to the bathroom and I had the earphones on. <laughs> and I'm in the bathroom just talking. I can see smoke. It's like a Cheech and Chong thing. And all of a sudden, I see the light going like this, and I hear the, the, what, the stewardess going, open up. Are you smoking in there? So I put it in my pocket, and I open the door. I'm like, what's going on? And I had the earphones on. She's like, were you smoking here? I go, do I look like I sm I'm smoking? And she smelled, and she goes, all right, go to your seat. And I gave my wife the keys. I'm like, they're going to arrest me when we land in LAX. Fuck no. They didn't say Nothing happened. Dick. That Nothing. was the end of it. Yeah, you got to, like, really smoke heavy. They know you're she doing She just decided not. Once you're out of there and it's vapor, what are, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, so. but if you if you came out of there and, like, a genuine tobacco smell oh, wafted shit. into the cabin. Oh, can shit. Can you imagine? Shit. <laughs> they would have been waiting for me on LAX. Yeah, yeah. And I'd been pulled over off a plane before. Like, really? weed in my pocket. Fuck yeah. Oh, I just talked to the guy. Just talked to the people they send and... Hopefully they don't smell it and they just let you walk. That's it. Pretty fucking interesting shit. Yeah, I like it. Just think, hey, listen, man, those long flights, that's why flying sucks, because you don't get fucking blasted. If I'm going to I prepare myself for the flight. Three flights in, you got to get an edible, you got to get the iPod, the book, you got to get the vapor pen. And then if it's six flights, you got to bring an edible on the flight, because after three, after the movie turns off, you still got another two and a half hours, and that could suck dick for two and a half hours. So you pop that fucking edible, and you put your iPod on, and you just roll the last two and a half hours. This time's I land. I don't want to get off the plane. Like, I'm too fucking high. Come back to me in an hour, all right? <laughs> One time I was in Atlanta, and I had classic disco. <laughs> One of those uh, airlines has classic disco, and it was really good. And I remember I was boogie oogie oogie. And they came over and they're like, we're going to land, take the earphones. I'm like, no, no, circle around like you motherfuckers do. Like when you go to Vegas, Vegas used to be a 32-minute flight before 9-11. Then all of a sudden it became an hour because they had to justify the 200 to take out of you, the yardstick. Used to, when I moved here, it was 40 bucks to go to fucking Vegas, round trip. 80 bucks, round trip. Now it's 220 on Southwest. And they stay up there long, like they dilly fucking dally. They do like 10 miles an hour. But if you're ever running late out of Burbank, they get there in 30 fucking minutes still. So if you're running late, you'll see they still get there on time, even though the flight was a half hour off. They could get you there in a half hour. Oh, yeah, it's all uh, air traffic shit, where they yeah. just put the planes up there and then, uh, you know, tell them to slow down because there's too many landing. And it's yeah. all a scam? They just scam everybody? It's well, no, they, well, they pad, uh, they also pad all the flight times so that, like, that way they are on time more often. Like, if they say the flight's gonna take 90 minutes, and it's only an hour flight, then they got that extra half hour to, you know, wiggle room so they're not, we can't yell at them for being late. But every time a plane arrives early, or like 90% of the time, they're like, we're here early, they brag about it, and then there's no gate to there's pull no into, gate and you just sit in the fucking plane anyway. 
That's Stop the, bragging about that, pilots. <laughs> Brag about it as we're exiting the plane, you know, as we're walking off. Hey, we got you here early and you're getting off the plane. You know, as opposed to we got you here early, now let's wait a while for a gate to open. Dicks. You, you don't get anxiety being that high on planes. That, that was the worst anxiety I ever got being high. Uh, well, that makes sense at first, but you really, when we travel as much as we do, you get used to it. Well, it was when LAX was doing that security and we had to take a shuttle bus to the plane. And I was, go I was really high at that. It was like two hours after the edible at that point. And it was, I got- That probably feels a little strange to be really high and be like driving around on the tarmac at an airport. And I was That's standing- That's an intense experience. I made a mistake and let <laughs> someone sit down next to Joey. And I stood up like an idiot for like a long, I thought it was gonna be like a five minute shot. They go like, they went like two, three miles down the road. And but when you land from Austin, you land on those gates downstairs. They only land like Albuquerque and like uh, El Paso. They all land in that fucking area downstairs and it all require a bus on American Airlines. And you have to, so you get off the plane, you have to stand on line at the terminal, then the bus takes you to baggage claim. That just happens with Ooh. those, Austin, El Paso, Albuquerque, when it's going to that part of the country for some reason, American. So it's a fucking nightmare. So when you land, you still gotta fucking get on a goddamn shuttle to take you back to baggage claim. I don't even know why we're talking about this shit. That's no fun. Well, a lot of the airports, too, now they have those trains to take you to baggage claim. Those are usually pretty slick. Denver. Not too bad. Yeah. Denver, Denver a couple places. Vegas. Um, Vermont, finally, we always keep track of uh, where the most people are watching this show from. And uh, in the uh, last episode, Vermont uh, catapulted to number three, the third most per capita viewers. Yeah. And... Um, we also have mobile device stats, and the uh, most 50% of the people that watch on a mobile device use the Android phone, 48% use the iOS, and then it drops really low to just small percentages for uh, all the other Windows mobile. I was going to say Windows Phone has like 0.1%. Blackberry is 0.2%. There's still a Zoom watching There's somehow. There's 0.2% motherfuckers watching us. I can't, I'm just going to say motherfuckers all the time just because Joey's here. <laughs> There's 2.2% watching us on their Blackberries. Oh my God. Like, why don't you throw that thing in the garbage for starters? And Vermont making a comeback. Vermont also sold out last night for Trump. Did you see that? Trump was in Vermont last night, fucked it up. Lines around the corner. Who are those people? Because yeah. Vermont's a big pot. Especially in Vermont. I was thinking about that. I yeah, was... it's kind of a weird place for him to. It's all the disgruntled people of this Vermont all showed up while everyone else just stayed home and got well, home. I heard that he gave away, like, 20,000 tickets for 2,000 seat arena. He pulled like a fucking oh, king. Trump's a savage, dog. Sneaky. Trump's a fucking savage. What Trump he forgot, is. these motherfucking morons don't know. You could see when he's talking to them, they're all like retarded because they're political. <laughs> they really are. Look at all of them. They're all fucking retarded. All of them. Well, they when don't Trump, know how to respond and I, to I, Listen, I can't vote. I got felonies. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how this ends up. This is your problem, America. <laughs> you motherfuckers keep voting and getting yourself into deeper with your fucking predictions. Go for somebody you don't like this time. You know, you've been voting for fucking losers since I could fucking remember, except for Clinton got his dick sucked and things were good for a while. <laughs> But, you know, besides that, you know, Obama, what the fuck has he done? How do you motherfuckers feel, you donkey sheep fucks that were walking around? Change, you fucking moron. You want to vote for the black guy so you don't show your little white friends at Starbucks that you're really prejudiced, you fucks. How did that work out for you, cocksuckers? Ha! Ha! You fucking sheepy fucks. <laughs> so you're saying vote for the candidate you like the least because... Maybe he'll Why do something. Not Maybe he'll make a difference. For the last 30,000 years, you've been voting for the losers. <laughs> you've been voting for fucking losers. Ever since they shot Kennedy. That's it. We got fucking shitheads. Nixon's a pickpocket. The other guy. Anyway. Yeah. Thank God I got felonies. I don't need to even worry about this shit or that shit where you got to go down there and judge somebody. Jury, oh, jury, jury oh duty. Get the fuck. Then they want to give I you $3. I should commit a felony just to get out of jury yeah. duty for the rest of my life. Tell them you know me. They'll throw you right the fuck out of there. Go, I'm cousins with Joey Diaz. Hold on one second. Listen, he's got to go. I've never Joey been called. Diaz is they're going to call you. They're going to put the kiss of death on you. Now you just told them I've never been called. Will you vote? Call you, you vote? No, that's why. Okay, that's why you haven't been called. Because, you know, if you sign up to vote or, but you must have a driver's license. Yeah. So you, I don't know. Why? California jury duty. You should get called for that. <coughs> Probably one day. My, my mother-in-law just got called and she doesn't speak English. So they send her home right away. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> that's a good thing. They to, write me a fucking you, letter once a year. Do they really? Oh, yeah. They call me once a year. You come in the jury duty. Listen, 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 listen. 
<laughs> Listen, before you say another fucking word, just type Jose Diaz in the computer. Ask yourself, do you really want this character walking around down there? And after like five minutes, like, okay, all right, bye-bye. And they just, listen, stop. Jose Diaz is like John Smith. That's the, that's the cute, you know what I'm saying? Like, they really don't know who the fuck I am. They really don't. Like, if, if I kill somebody and go to Miami, you ain't never gonna find Jose Diaz. That's the capital Jose Diaz. You understand me? So I've always had that hook. I'm not that Jose Diaz. And then they look and there's a million of them and they go, all right, he's not that bad of a guy. <laughs> but they're fucking confused. They don't know. Their name throws them the fuck off. I'm not that Jose Diaz. Yeah. I'm Coco. Yeah. And Come even on. then, I got 19 aliases. <laughs> you know, one time I got arrested and used my friend's name. Not only did I get, but I went and did everything. I got charged as him. I did community <laughs> service as him. Years later, we're eating dinner. He's like, somebody got pulled over in Colorado and used my name. I'm eating like fucking choking to death because I forgot <laughs> I even used his name. Well, you got arrested as him and like went and did all the. Like, I was I was out on bail for something else. Listen to me. I was out on bail for something <laughs> yeah. else, and my buddy sent me like a box of watches that were missing. And I took him to a long. Bu- Listen to this. Listen, happened to find the box of truck. Listen to this fucking shit. So I took the fucking thing to this pawn shop, and they called the cops. So the cops came, the cops had just arrested, I had just gotten out on bail on the other thing. I went back to Boulder Jail as my friend's name, and they're still, as the guy's fingerprinting me, he goes, Joey, how you doing? On the fucking sheet of paper, it's a complete different fucking name. This guy's fingerprinting me, going, Joey, how you doing these days? How you been holding out up there? I see you back in here. On the fucking paper is somebody else's name. It was hysterical. I had no license. I called my girlfriend at the time, and I go, hey, it's, and she's like, who? It's, she's like, no, it's not. It's, I go, no, it's not. It's da da da. Come on down here and bail me out. I lost my license. So the cops asked her a bunch of questions, and they let me out. This is how fucked up Boulder was in, like, the 80s. So I, I said, what am I going to do? They're going to put a fucking arrest on me? Once they send those fingerprints to D.C., whether it's a day or a year, they're going to find it's not me, and they're going to come get me under that name. That's criminal impersonation. But if I do the whole thing as that person... So I went to court, got sentenced as the guy. I got one <laughs> year probation. I had to do fucking community service. So I did it at the AIDS place. I knew all the guys at the AIDS place. I would go down there, paint the wall, play the drums with them, and get the fuck out of there. And they signed me off after, like, 16 hours. I was done. I did the time. The next time I went to court as Jose Diaz, they had an AKA as the other guy. They were like, we, ah, oh. we almost got you, cocksucker. But you did the whole thing. I did the whole thing as the other guy, and they let me loose. So you learn something new That's every terrific day. advice. You can't do that now. Everybody. Now they got you. Now There's all too they much do is put the yeah, yeah. Now they got you. You can't run that scam. That sucks. Game. Yeah, I can't do that. Can't anymore. run that scam. I used to sneak into the Academy Awards because I'd just show up in a tux. How did you get past security? You know, it's just, security was just a person taking a ticket, you know? And uh, there's lots of ways to get, you know, get around that. Like, you know, if you're like, oh, I left my ticket inside. You're wearing a tux, you know? Like, just nowadays people PA. break in and try to get into everything. But like, this was in the 80s and, the, you know, and it just worked. Well, you're you just smoke, you're gonna sit there. I'm, bit, I, I'm in my second You're gonna pipe. fucking sit there, you're talking, drinking fucking soda. You right. didn't bring it here to sit there. It's weed soda. We're gonna, it is, it is. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get back from the break. Uh, we're gonna give uh, Lee some more sprig and uh, we'll see you guys uh, in a minute or two. Do it when I say to do it. One of the most important aspects of our band is the gong. We like to use the gong to separate us from other bands. It's very liberally, but at the right moments. At the right moments, it can make the entire event super special. But there's somebody in our band who thinks that you can just be willy-nilly hitting a gong. See, the hard part is there's not a lot of people who know how to play the gong. It's a very nuanced art form. I felt like I needed to. I needed to go somewhere. I needed a home. I needed to be stable. I needed more stability. Oh my gosh. Worth every penny. Hey, you, 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 yeah, yeah, get him. Sometimes, you know, something happens that nobody was expecting. Not today. Not today. Cooler heads prevail when it comes to him, but on one occasion I just said, hey man, get on your goddamn feet. 
when you have somebody that's as close as a brother to you, it's easy to get in a friendly fight that is reminiscent of sibling rivalries. I've always had problems with your funk and groove sensibility. Well, I think I could say the same for you, and apparently you don't have an excuse. Go fuck yourself. There ain't a white person up in here right now. Except that motherfucker right there. you guys we're here with joey coco diaz <laughs> aka lots of other names we don't need to get into all 19 aliases and, <laughs> and straight up lee syed is here he's got the one name and he's sticking with it we've got 1790 people watching us live yeah but many thousands more will watch it uh over the rest of time as we go forward um I you brought, brought you something some, i brought you some technology i'm excited my favorite uh, I tried one of these. My favorite medical store sent me these for you, perennial. These are a dabber. They do two of them right off the bat and see the devil. That's, ch -ch -ch, there you go. Look yeah. at, this is the future, cocksuckers. It's, you could, yeah, you could probably do this on a plane. Oh, you could do that in front of TSA. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're foaming like Lamar Odom from the mouth and shit. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Look at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> but bam, time to see the devil. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, there's no, there's very little smoke because it's just one quick thing that just one quick thing. shoots down in there. That's the fucking future. Wow. For Thank you people you so living much. in Iowa thinking of moving, that's <laughs> it. If that don't push you over the fucking top, nothing will right there. Yeah. Or maybe not move, but go to, go to Colorado, buy a bunch of these, and then that's go right. back to your dumb town. Well, what are the rules in New York? They just opened them in New York the other day. Now it's, uh, you know, uh, well, that's medical. Okay. And then, you know, but also, like, if you get caught on the street with weed, it's like a ticket now. No, but do they have, like, this cool that's stuff there? That's controlled substance. Right, you said you can't that's even... That's a controlled substance in any other fucking state. That's crazy. You gotta be really cool with those, those vapor pens, the tubes. But like this, if it didn't have a fun label on it that had a weed, <laughs> a weed leaf, it just looks legit. And like, you know, what's TSA gonna do? Like, what is that? It's a, it's, it's, a, asthma it's my thing. asthma thing. Oh, what are they gonna do? Uh, Try it and say, no, it isn't. That's weed. Fuck it. That guy's not gonna talk. <laughs> Try to smell it. That guy's not yeah. gonna talk. Oh, it does have an interesting smell. Yes, it does. Have you ever bought one of those? Like at the weed stores, they have like the there's your uh, the open bottom shaving cream or anything like that to hide your stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, there's all those work? things. Yeah, I, I bet they kind of work. But the Another thing is, one? is that uh, yeah, but so this is six hundred milligrams. You're gonna be so high an hour or two from now. Who gives a fuck? He's getting so pizza later, man. so I'm good. I'm getting yeah. pizza. Yeah, get I the did pizza going. I four hundred milligrams, and I got anxiety. Um, so you give me six. <laughs> Lee noticed our uh, Poke Bowl yeah. here and enjoyed uh, my use of it. And uh, they sent me a bunch of them uh, in fancy Christmas wrapping, but I'd like to give you one to Thank take you home so with much. you today. Yeah. Do you want to show them how it's so cool? It's because it, I always get my oh, face dirty or something. <laughs> they've seen it for a uh, hundred episodes. This oh, is okay. the hundred and first episode. Thank you for having me. Of the, the show. Uh, always a pleasure. Um, oh, I see. I, I wondered what was shaking around in there. They also have this little. Uh, container that they had there. But they, it's just a, you know, it's a pretty simple idea, but it's just a, a thing that, you know, you can poke your bowls. And it pops out immediately. You, yeah, you just uh, go like that and it cleans it right out. And you're all set, ready to go again. And then the bottom of it's rubber. It's like an infomercial. The bottom is rubber, so it's just, you just dump it right out into the garbage or toilet or wherever you put your ashes. That's so cool. I just, I've been just popping it out like a whole the the carburetor. We got a deal for people that uh, Pokeball will hook you up with a discount if you uh, if you mention us. So let me let me do that plug right now. Let me do it. Hold on in here. Are you sick and tired of flicking ashes behind the couch? <laughs> Is your wife yell at you? Does your wife call you a fucking disgusting fucking pig? Those days are long gone. Hi, my name is Joey Diaz. I'm a professional pot smoker. Fell in and I got problems. <laughs> this is the answer to your fucking problems right here. The poker bowl. No more fucking around. No more putting the bowl out on the cat. You take the bowl, you flip it over, you clean it. Ba-boom. You're fucking stoned in 50 seconds, okay? What's the website? Uh, if they go to pokerbowl.com. Go to pokerbowl.com. 
And use the uh, promo code Doug. And use the promo code Doug. Ten percent off. U G for you dumb fucks. Ten percent off. Ten percent off right now. So go to pokeball.com yeah. with the code name Doug. D O U G. Yeah, go there now, you dumb. Fucks. Go there now, cocksuckers. <laughs> Stop burning carpet holes in your fucking <laughs> grandmother's couch. <laughs> great, great sales pitch. We might, you know. We might have to make that into a spot. We don't fuck around. We don't fuck around here on the... Uh, that way we'll have Joey on every high. episode. That's right. We don't fuck around here. Um, let's do some pot topics, you guys. Let's do it. Pot topics. Talk about... It's been two weeks or so or more since we've been on, so uh, a lot of shit's been going on with, uh, with weed. And uh, the NCAA, uh, which is what? That's like college football, right? Yeah. Uh... They are uh, looking into the marijuana policies and about, you know, throwing s student athletes out for being caught with weed. They're going to try to make it a little less uh, uh, intense. They've cut the, some of the penalties in half already who, who, for athletes who fail for screenings. And the uh, NCAA chief medical officer is pushing for them to stop testing at all. They're college kids. They're going to have some weed in their system. And they're not getting paid, at least and on the it, smoke a little bit. Weed doesn't help or hurt when you're playing football, in my opinion. Probably helps a little bit in the sense that you could probably take a little bit more damage while you're high. You know what I mean? I don't you know. Get, I wouldn't want to get, get tackled get, right now. You can get a concussion when you're high, and it wouldn't be as... It would still be awful, but it wouldn't be as bad. Right? I got a concussion when I was a kid. I got into a motorcycle accident. I went home, smoked some weed, and in two hours, I knew the alphabet fucking backwards. You know? Tell the truth! <laughs> Backwards, I was dropping fucking knowledge. <laughs> no, I really did get a concussion. So, who knows? There's some company uh, called Virio Health that uh, is a Jewish Orthodox... Uh, uh, they've been working with a Jewish Orthodox union, and they're going to make uh, kosher edibles. Those are going to be the worst things you've ever tasted. How do you know? Because nothing kosher is good. Have you tried Manischewitz? Listen, it's the worst listen, wine in the history of wine. How fucking long did you think the Jews were just going to sit back and let everybody make money and they weren't going to get in on this game? If they were out of fucking the shrimp they got from Katrina. <laughs> Remember, they bought all the shrimp with the oil on it and then they wash it off <laughs> and then they sell it back high four years later. So they're out of the fucking shrimp now. So now they need a new scam. You guys are watching Guide Dogs Won't Harm. And the Twitter questions have been coming in. Velveeta Jesus, which is, that's a great Twitter name, wants to know, is it true that Joey tricks some comics into eating 200 milligram stars by putting them in 50 milligram wrappers? No, Chiba Chews. I was taking, <laughs> I was taking the 180 milligram, it's elite. I would go to, I would go to the thing and I would take the, <laughs> that's how I got my tolerance. The little chew out and I put the whole thing in there and give it to Lee, also to Ari. When the stars first came out, they had hard candy. So it was five hard candies for 375 milligrams. I put five stars in the bag, so Ar but they were really 125 milligrams. You follow me? Yeah. So Ari came over, ate one, and he kept looking at the bag. He kept going, I know this fucking label's a fake, and it was a fake. I took a label you off got the bag. Good. Fuck you. Yeah, and you yeah. used to squish it, right? You used to like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to get the Chiba Chews and squish them. So it looked like half a Chiba Chew, and you were dropping the whole 180. I used to ask how much I was doing or how strong. I just don't even ask anymore. Chiba Chews are ridiculous. They're already the size of a Tootsie Roll, and it's supposedly like 10 doses in one, like in one of those things. Like you're supposed to slice it like Paul Servino cutting garlic in a prison cell. Yeah, that's if you live in Studio City and you're gluten-free. <laughs> but when you're a savage like us, you got to take the chance. Columbus did. You know what I'm saying? If you're gluten-free, <laughs> yeah, you eat a little piece and tell your friends and you put a scarf on and in Studio City with a fucking cashmere sweater or some <laughs> shit, flip-flops. Shout out to 8-Bit Banjo on Twitter for guide dogs won't harm. Um, more stuff about uh, uh, athletes and weed. NFL is also looking into it. Uh, uh, or I should say that the former NFL players are all... Uh, stepping up that's a good place to step up from like i used to play so i still have some you know skin in this game you know i have a right to say something but also they can't do anything to them because they're they don't play anymore so these guys are stepping up and saying that uh you know they should just allow uh nfl players to 
you know, not smoke weed, not get penalized if they get uh, caught with it. You don't think Tom Brady's been smoking dope for 80,000 <laughs> years? I, you got to figure, right? Yeah, he goes down to Brazil with that blunt, and he smokes up, and he comes back, and he throws those fucking darts, and he cheats. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, they say the NFL is... Uh... You know, absolutely permits them from using it, and but they're all they're all hooked on painkillers. Like it's the most, it's horrible. Not a good deal. If you watch those, not a good deal 30s. for those rich football players. So then again, I take it back. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody should be able to smoke weed. It's the bottom line, and not lose their job because of it, unless their job is they've been hired by someone to not smoke weed. That's the only profession I can think of. Or uh, brain surgeons, maybe. Or would you mind if your brain surgeon got high? Would you think? I think if they got like a little high, I think it, it might be, be good, good for their concentration. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What do you think? Would you get sur brain surgery from someone who's stoned? Look at the shape of me. <laughs> yeah. Look at the fucking he shape of me. Who am I to answer gonna... a question? I'm done. I'm done with the question. Who am I to answer this a question? no game show. I fucked up. That's it. It's over. Oh, well, there's this one too. Yeah, yeah, lots of options here on the table, guys. I'm glad you're uh, glad you're te tearing it up because the viewers love it when we uh, when we smoke constantly. Well, Ricky Williams, even quit though we're football. trying to have a conversation, who? Ricky Williams, a few years ago, they did a 30 for 30, but he quit football because he wanted to smoke uh, for other things, but he also wanted to smoke weed because he kept getting suspended for smoking weed, and he quit in like the in his prime. He was great. That's pretty cool. Didn't he start a corporation with Kyle, Kyle Turley? With Kyle Turley about that stuff. So they're trying to, you know, for players with concussions and stuff like that to smoke pot or whatever. You know, listen, it's the two, truth. It's 2016. You know, eventually people, uh, everybody's, it is. everybody's listening. 2016. But except the advertisers. You know, you're going to still have advertisers that. You still can't put weed on they're ABC just or NBC. Yeah, they just. But it's 2016. Every year. Two more states, it becomes legalized or, you know, something for medical. My buddy has cancer. He caught in Vietnam and he fucking came back. And you know what? I brought him a bag of those green stars. He called me a week ago and he said he joined the gym, that he's been working out, that he's been, you know, having an appetite. He didn't have an appetite after the chemo, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this stuff works on a medical level. But I hear different rumblings from people. It makes people, people happy. That makes people that's happy. Part and of that's, medicine is being be, being sound and you know, sound mind and body and being being happy and content. You eat a couple stars. You meditate. You go to yoga. Yeah, you give your not? wife a stabbing. Nobody gets <laughs> mad, right or wrong. <laughs> yeah. You how many uh, how many felonies you commit in Pittsburgh? You think in your life? None. Really? Yeah, I never got in trouble. You're cool there. Because the mayor there signed into law a uh, city ordinance to decriminalize the possession of up to 30 grams. That's uh, a lot of weed. And the, you know, and the law also obviously decriminalizes the, the smoking of it as well. I think those go hand in hand. Uh, it used to be that if you got caught, you could, be go to, you could go to prison for 30 days and have to pay a $5,000 fine. That is fucking strict, Pittsburgh. January of 83, I got arrested for smoking weed in Harlem. And they took the cop, asked me a question, what my name was, blah, blah, blah. He basically took the weed after he spoke to me. This is 32 years ago. He talked to me, he took the weed, and he threw some out on the floor. And he goes, this is less than a half ounce. He gave me a ticket. And I got six months probation. I had to go to court on a Monday night. It was the Monday night when Houston played Five Slam and Jamma. It was that same night when Houston played North Carolina State with Jim Valvano, and Jim Valvano won. Uh, here I am in court, fucking, I bet $100 on Houston, and they're not covering. They're giving nine and a half fucking points, and I'm calling sports phone. That's how old I am. They used to have sports phone, 50 cents a call, and you'd have to call and wait for your score. And they always gave you your score last. Like, if you bet hockey, that's the last thing they gave you. They told them about Chinese ping pong, <laughs> fucking everything except the hockey. So... That's, I don't even know why I said that. I'm just keep going. <laughs> well, uh, uh, in Pittsburgh, it uh, used to be, I mean, uh, now, the new rule will be that uh, you get a $25 citation for possession and 100 for smoking. So, you know, I can afford 100 bucks, so I'll, I'll just smoke wherever when I'm in Pittsburgh. I love I Pittsburgh. I can't believe that in this day and age, a cop would come over. If I'm smoking... Well, that's the thing. They don't even want to bother with it. If I'm smoking by a fucking school... 
you know what? I fucked up. But if I'm smoking <laughs> on Broadway in Manhattan, I'm minding my own business. There's no fucking kids around. With all this shit we got going on in the world, just keep fucking walking in this day and age. I don't give a fuck what the law is. You don't have time to come over. And you, don't, you just don't have the time, man. You see three guys smoking a dope with a fucking hat on or something. They're not, it's not like they're plotting to take over something. You know, they're just smoking a number after work. Yeah, ISIS isn't standing around in smoke circles. Fuck no. Making their plans. Fuck no. <laughs> Those fuckers. If they smoked a little, maybe they would be so full of hate. So I don't, I don't get it. I can see if you're driving this. Listen, man, I love smoking weed. I don't smoke weed outside my house. I smoke in the office. I don't smoke in the car. You smoke I in the basement. I don't ever want a cop to pull me on for me to have weed on me. I really don't. I just don't. Just that's a personal preference. They've already given us this. They've already given us this. Why must I push the fucking envelope? I got to drive on Wilshire with a joint in my mouth, proving something? Nah. So I just smoke in my house. I'm, I'm happy to have a license. You know, it's, uh, it's, they tell you it's coverage if, you know, you get caught smoking in front of your house. I don't really believe it. But again, I'm not blowing smoke at them outside the police station. So we're very fortunate we have this in California. So... Why abuse it, you know? Do you ever get, like, do cops ever wait outside dispensaries? Or have they ever given you problems? No. Uh, really? No. no. I figured some jerk no. cops would do it. There no. was a lot of, you know, dispensaries had a hard time getting, you know, getting a foothold because, you know, first of all, a lot of them were probably shady anyway. But also, like, the L.A. City Council made crazy rules. Like, you, got, you can't be within X number of yards from a school, which is everywhere. There's schools all over the place. Yeah. You know? But I think that's uh, not as much of a problem now that, you know, all these dispensaries are proving that they're, if, as long as they're doing the paperwork and, the, and paying their taxes and, you know, and not upsetting the neighborhood that they're in, you know, a lot of them are really low-key and chill. And, like, you don't see too many that are, like, a big sign that says, you know, weed store or anything. They all just look like, they all have like a green cross or something, you know? You went to one that used to be run by like a Christian organization, right? There was one around the block from me that was Christian. And they were horrible. They had like six different type of weeds. They had a crucifix on the wall. I don't want to buy weed when there's a fucking crucifix on the wall. You know what <laughs> don't need that. I got enough fucking Christian Catholic guilt. But then it's... Let's separate, let's separate church and smoke, you guys. <laughs> Where I go now, they have a parking lot. But where I used to go, I used to see fucking people pull up and sit there while somebody went in. And a couple times, I would have to tell the people, dog, where, who fucking raised you? You never fucking park in front of this spot. That's, that's drug buying 101. Go down the fucking corner and drop your friend off on an umbrella, even if it's sunny out. People think he's half retarded. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how you buy fucking weed. So it's still, people ruin that shit. When mm -hmm. you have a nice, chill spot, you know, people sometimes do dumb shit like that, and then neighborhoods just start complaining. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to be cool about it. Don't make a big scene. You know? Every time somebody yells at me somewhere for smoking, I just say, okay, and start walking in the other direction, you know? It's like, I'll go right over there. It's where that person's not going to be to tell me to not do it. Seizures, according to a, a study... Uh, in uh, children and young adults, uh, uh, marijuana, they're saying it. You know, we were saying earlier, we're not sure how much it can be used for medicine, but uh, clearly it's, uh, uh, it's good for uh, epilepsy. Well, they did that thing on CNN about it, like people moving to states that allowed it so that kids can use it. Yeah, that's a big thing, you know? Like, I'm sure there's a lot of GoFundMes and stuff, like, you know, help us help us relocate to a place where we can, you know, have our medicine. But also, I hear, like, maybe 13 states are going to be in play this year for uh, new laws. And, uh, and cities are going, like Pittsburgh, I just said, cities are going crazy with it, with uh, decriminalizing it. So it's all headed in the right direction. Um, and uh, let's go to another, is it time for another break? Did you show me a thing? <laughs> he shows me a sign that says two minutes and then a couple of minutes go by and I'm like, did I see a sign that said two minutes? Or was that earlier when I saw a sign that said two minutes? We'll be right back with Joey and Lee right after this. I'm Dan Levy and I'm the host of Baby Talk. What is Baby Talk? I'll tell you. It's a show where I take my comedian friends and bring them together with little children and a bunch of weird shit happens. And I'm DJ Jensen Cart. You see, for the past three years, we've been doing a live show over at the Meltdown Theater in Los Angeles. And we thought, hmm, how can we make less money? 
let's put it on the internet. So we've taken our strangest kids from the live show and paired them with our favorite broken comedians, and we filmed nine episodes for you to watch online. It's an original show that seems very similar to Kids Say a Darnest Things because it is very similar to Kids Say the Darnest Things. And you're gonna love the show, even if you hate kids. Especially if you hate kids. Have fun watching, it's very funny. He's I, spot on. I, I ghost write for Meek Mill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get attached to saying this, but I like The Weeknd better than Drake. You like The Weeknd better than Drake? J. Cole, you don't... A classic comparison. You don't know who J. Cole is. <laughs> no, I love J. Cole. Wow. That's The Weeknd. You're J. Cole mature. is not the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, J no, he's not. No. Wait, hold on. Hold on. No, no, you. Hold on. No, no. You have like no chill right now. Hold on. No, you have, you have no, no chill. No, you have no chill. No, no, chill. Nobody here has no chill. chill. I'm sorry. Right. You don't think I have chill? No, no chill. You know right how many now. times I smoked weed in a bathroom today? <laughs> <laughs> and I have no chill. Hey, we're back. 2,000 people are watching. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Our friend Johnny Hemp1, who uh, seems to get Twitter uh, questions in a lot, uh, wants to know if we dab. Or we, do any of us dab? Any nah. dabbers? Nah. Anybody celebrating 710? What's that? Uh, you know, oil uh, uh, upside down is 710. Okay. And so uh, July 10th is dab day. Uh, kind of like 420 for weed, but. That's super high that you yeah. think about the oil upside down is yeah. 710. I've done some 710 shows in Sacramento. It's fun. Uh, and uh, San Francisco where you, uh, you know, dab out and then go up on stage, which is, you know, that stuff really wrecks me. Well, that's dab, right? The inhaler? And well, the, the vape pens are a form of that, yeah. But I'm talking about when somebody oh, takes the fucking nail and the you know, torch. The fucking the oh, movies no, yeah. are fun. I mean, yeah. plays. Oh, and, my God. And they, uh, you know, they light it on fire for a while, and they get it so hot that... I, I Every time I do it, someone does the uh, the little the wax for me. I can, they I can do never, it for you? Yeah, I can never... They, they always do it in I circles. I like it. It makes me feel like Bill Nye the Science Guy or some shit, but uh, that hits it gets hard. me way too high, way too fast, yeah. But I, I'll do it, <laughs> you know, not, not against it. I forget uh, to turn my lights off when I go to sleep. I leave the torch on or something. I, when you get that high, I, I you can't really, the torches that they have, you know, you gotta be pulling the trigger or to, you can't really accidentally leave it on. Okay, anything. thank God. I don't want no fucking torches around, <laughs> all right? I don't want no fucking torches around. You know, cocaine was a beautiful thing. Then people started free basing and blowing their fucking house up. It was yeah. just simple. Yeah, exactly. Cut it up and snort a fucking why, line. Why bring all Same these complicated thing with weed. things You fucking into break it, it up. You put in a bong and you smoke it. Now everybody wants to outdo and whatever, and I get it. But you know what? I'm pretty happy with this fucking reefer. This reefer is strong enough. You want to see the devil eat four of these fucking stars and tie yourself <laughs> up. You'll see the fucking devil, okay? Last week I got sick and I took NyQuil one night and ate an edible. Don't ever make that goddamn mistake. Don't add horrible. I didn't even think about what it. What happened? Yeah, why? What? I took an edible. I, I'm doing a podcast, fucking around. I went home and I'm like, I don't want to cough tonight in the middle of the night. So I drank the regular, regulation-sized NyQuil. At a fucking 3 in the morning, I woke up. I couldn't breathe. I was high as fuck. I had to wake my wife up just in case I had a heart attack in the living room. She got up and gave me like a half a Xanax. That calmed me down. I went back to sleep, but don't... I would have thought that whole thing would just make you extra knocked uh, out. Something fucking happened. Something That's went wrong. That's crazy. Because I've done that lots of times. <laughs> Someone, I might try to stay away from that. Something fucking went <laughs> Try wrong. to remember that, everybody. Uh, speaking of things that are memorable, pretty sweet segue. It's time for you guys to watch a magic trick. My friend Let's Gabe is here. It's Gabe time. Oh, shit. That's right. <laughs> hey, Leo. Oh, shit. Hey. Hey. Good to meet hey, you. Good to meet you. Good to see you, my friend. Likewise. Always a pleasure. So this is a, this is a pretty quick trick. But uh, look, this hand's empty, right? Right. And this hand's empty. Right. The weird thing is this hand is also empty. <laughs> that is really fast. <laughs> That's super fast. Did you do that one on here before? No. Oh my god. I've seen that trick before. It creeps me out. This little hand creeps me yeah, out. Yeah, that's not... It's really a bummer. Where did you get that? <laughs> Just makes you start thinking about, man, what if, I, what if my dick was that small? Wouldn't it be great if you passed it in your house? <laughs> you put it on their fucking dick or something like that. You took a picture of them. <laughs> 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 
Tiny hand on the dick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Joey Coco Diaz is starting the Savage Dad Tour uh, January 28th at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte. That's a fun joint. That's a fun joint. I like yep. that place. Uh, you got your podcast, The Church of What's Happening Now, and joeydiaz.net. D-I-A-Z. I think you spelled it once earlier tonight, too. Yeah. Uh, tonight. Oh, shit. The day, it's so early today <laughs> in Cal right now in California, and I feel like I'm done for the night. Uh, you go there for, for his podcast, for dates, for merch. Whatever you want. All Stop that stuff. Stop by, say hello, leave me an email. Lee, do you have it's anything you want to add? Any uh, personal... Go to LeeSyatt.com. Oh, yeah. You got your S -Y -A -T -T. Uh, I do a podcast with Steve Simone called Good Times. And I just started one called Life is Neutral with a young comic named Johnny Rock. And it's all about, like, feeling like you're stuck when, like, you're 25 and not knowing where to go. Interesting. Yeah. And you, you come on Doug Benson's show, you smoke pot, and you and figure out where the fuck you're going to go. Now I, know, I won't know where I'm going on the way home. Yes, but you It's will. all going to come together. Well, fortunately, we send you a, a duber to... Uh, uh, pick you up and bring you back. Oh yeah, thank God. Yeah, so do you think you got too high right now? No, this is- Those edibles, you part. really hit those, you took a couple of stars and uh, uh, what else were we eating earlier? Uh, soda, <laughs> yeah, stars. Soda. Oh yeah, you drank we a soda. We just ate three stars last night. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna get, probably so, get as high as you've ever been today. Yeah, you got no sperm left. <laughs> it's over. It's all gone? You can't impregnate nobody right now. Yeah, that's what I wish that's how it worked. That'd be yeah, awesome. No, Jesus. No, this is this is like a Wednesday night. Don't worry, I don't have to wear a condom. I my uh, sperm is full of marijuana. <laughs> That's I have what I too thought. Too much THC in my marijuana. That's what I thought. I mean, in my sperm. <laughs> I do have too much THC in my marijuana as well. I've got shows coming up in L.A., Vegas, San Antonio, and more. But most importantly, this is such an exciting piece of business. Um, getting dug with high. We'll have a show, a live show, in front of an audience on on 420, April 20th, and everyone can come if they buy a ticket at 8 o'clock. Uh, the beautiful Alex Theater in Glendale, California, is where we're going to do it. And uh, it'll also be a podcast, so uh, we'll go live on YouTube uh, at 8 o'clock Pacific on 420. So got plans on the evening of 420 you can watch us when you uh you know you get home and i'm gonna have uh, surprise guests on stage like we always do and uh, tickets are on sale now at bitly.com slash gdwh 420 they'll put that on the screen I was gonna for say, everybody lee lee was making a face like along. why would anybody be able to remember that <laughs> what is it G okay getting dug with high gw gdwh that's hard man <laughs> 420 yeah go there Buy a ticket. They're come, fun. Joy was on Come be with shows. us on, on 420. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh, Joey's freaking everybody out with that tiny hand. This is fucked up. <laughs> this is so fucked up in so many ways. <laughs> Only a magician could show up with this little hand and fuck my world up. We got merch. <laughs> Put the merch where they can go for merch on the screen. OK, thanks. Covered that. Um, thank you, guys. <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Our next show. <laughs> put your tiny hands together for our next show. Uh, one week from today, only a week before we'll be back. And it's going to be next Thursday at 2.15 Pacific time, 5.15 on the East Coast. Hope to see you guys then. Go watch more shows in the archives. Watch somebody uh, episode with a, a guest you've never heard of, because we have some really fun conversations with people you, you'll really like getting to know on some of the uh, lesser viewed archived episodes. Yeah, let's all hit it as we go out. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>